Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. And it's the 4th of March 2019, and it's cold out, I've got the heater on. And I thought it's about time we started on a new project. We haven't done a decent project in a while. So those of you that follow me regularly will have seen me using uh, this ridiculous knurling tool for the mini lathe <laughs> that I've been using recently. And I keep threatening to make uh, a scissor or clamp type knurling tool. So we're going to get on with that. Um, so this basically is going to be part one of making a homemade, made, homemade, homemade knurling tool. Anyway, you'll notice I've got my uh, double boost mug underway. So big shout out to Double Boost. If you don't follow Double Boost on uh, YouTube, I suggest you do. Um, I mean, he's a great guy. Does all sorts of stuff. I find him very interesting. I do like to watch quite a bit of YouTube, different engineers, and see what people are up to and what have you. But I'd certainly recommend if you follow me to follow Double Boost. I'll see if I can put a link down to his uh, page below somewhere. So I'll put it up on screen. Double Boost is who you're looking for on YouTube. And if you just scroll up to the bottom, I'll try and put a link to his site. While we're on the subject of shout-outs, um, recently I've, uh, well, very recently, in the last week or so, I picked up on a couple of lads from the US called Active Atom. Um, these guys are into micro-machining, very small uh, jewellers, lathes, that sort of thing. Their history is in watchmaking, what have you. And they're going about restoring a load of, um, sort of, their machinery, lathes and what have you. And, you know, drilling machines, tapping machines for the micro-engineering level. And I believe they've got some sort of project coming where they're going to start manufacturing a product using these machines that they've refurbished at the end of it. But it's all a big secret what the product is. But this is Active Atom. They've been going about five months, but they've been in the trade for years and years. And they really need a bit of a boost, I think. I, I'm not sure what their subscribers are, but uh, if you enjoy the stuff I do, their stuff is phenomenal. Their workshop is incredible. Um, so this is Active Atom. Again, it's Lance and Patrick. Hi Lance, hi Patrick. In the bottom, I'll try and put a link to their page as well. And one further one. Um, made of mine that I worked with oh, some time ago, three, three four years ago. Um, left the company, very good computer guy, way above my head, the sort of stuff he does. And uh, he went to work for one of the uh, Formula E teams. as something to do with software and what have you. Anyway, you know, the electric Formula One team. Anyway, he left that job. Um, I'm not sure what he's doing now as a job, but him and his mate, um, this is Chris I'm talking about, him and his mate Aid, have got a channel called Pedalbox, and they are building a race car based on an Audi TT, I believe, but they're building from scratch, you know, a tubular frame, all the rest of it, make it up as they go along. I like their style. It's my style. It's great fun. Don't overthink things. Don't engineer them. Just Put the two bits together and work out what you can make to join them, that sort of idea. And I love this style, it's great. The production quality is really good. But that's pedal box and that's Chris and Eight. So again, I'll put a link. So that's Double Boost, Active Atom, and Pedal Box. If you follow me, you'll probably enjoy what they do. So anyway, we all like to help each other and shout out here. So that's what I'm doing. So a few things been going on the last week or so. Um, after having made that set of darts and my friend, he hasn't had them yet. Um, he's working late all this week. He was away on the weekend visiting family. Probably sometime next weekend I might get a bit of footage uh, in between the rugby that's on next weekend. Might get a bit of footage of uh, us having a bit of a throw with the darts. On that subject, I've done a bit of fiddling with an old set of darts of my own. I play with a 19 gram dart. Um, never really been happy with them, but I've been throwing with them for two, three years. Um, I did have a couple of sets I've had for years and years of like sort of 24, 27 gram darts. And I did like the barrel type on one of them. So what I'm doing is reducing it down to something similar to my mate starts, which I quite like the look and feel and shape of, similar to a set I had years ago. So I'm doing a bit of a modification, mod, modification, <laughs> a modification to another set of darts. So I'll, you've seen me work with darts before, so I won't put too much footage in. A little bit of footage of me doing improvement on my own darts. And what I'm doing is reducing the weight. Uh, for, I think they were 20, actually these particular ones were 27 grams. So I've taken them down to 23, but that's still way up on the darts I've got. My sort of end goal is 21 grams with the right balance of front and back. It's a bit technical uh, as the 
you know how what the dart shape is where the weight is in relation to the um to the front to the back you know where you want the weight so that they fly to suit yourself anyway so i'll throw a bit of footage of that in and i've also been contacted by somebody who saw that video and interested in me doing something to their dart so i anyway i've sent him my email address um so i might be doing a little bit of work on somebody else's darts for them but hey you are glad to help hey eh? so we need to get on with this knurling tool so let me show you what i got so i got a great big chunk of en8 here which i'm thinking of the body that that's going to go i think what i will do is we'll cut the dovetail in here so that it fits onto my tool post it's the same as you know all the other hold, uh, tool holders you know the these sorts of things with the dovetail in so i'm going to cut Obviously, it's not going to be this long. <laughs> I'm going to cut the end, machine the dovetail in it the same as the others. Um, I'll probably leave the full width on the end, but the, the dovetail can be narrow where it's no need for it to be this, uh, this big. So it'll be very similar to one of these tool holders, um, which is a sort of standard tool holder that I've got. But the end will stick out the front of the tool post for the two holes to take the, to take the scissors. So we'll make a start on making that. What have we here? another set of darts now strangely enough this time they are an old set of my own now i've been playing with a set of 19 gram darts for a long time and i've never really been happy with them but they're working but i've never really been happy with them before that i played with these in this guys which were 27 grams and they were way too heavy for me my ideal weight is sort of 23 grams so i've been messing about with it skimming a bit what have you I do want the darts to be more front heavy um, so that they land in the board more point with a slight downward point and when I throw these ones um, as they stand they do sort of stick in and, and sort of droop so I want the weight all more towards the front so what I'm doing is rather than reducing the diameter to reduce weight I'm taking some weight off the uh, tail end as it were so yeah I've done two of them I'll just take you through the procedure and then uh, perhaps when the uh, the set for my mate gets tried out i'll give these a whirl as well but i dare say i'll have a bit of practice with them first because they'll be new to me so i got the dart in the three jaw seems to be running pretty true i got the tapping drill for the 2ba up in the chuck here and i've got the tailstock set on zero on the hand wheel and i've pushed the drill right in to touch the back face of the existing hole which is what i did on the other two so i just back the drill off half a mil and we'll start her up So it should just start squealing when I get the zero on my tail stop. Yes, there it is. So what I'll basically do now is, let's see if we can get you a bit of a shot. You can see I've got zero on my tail stop. It is actually not far off accurate, this. It's pretty good. So I'll just take it gently because we don't want to get a lot of heat in there. And I'm going to wind in eight turns. So that's one. Two. I'm sure you don't want to watch all eight. <laughs> I'll carry on and bring you back when we're done. So that's it drilled out, eight millimeters deep. So next I'm going to retap it with a 2BA, exactly the same thread. I'll put a little bit of cut in uh, cut in jollop on there, and I'm just going to wind it in by hand. This is the first tap. And just let in the thread pull the tailstock in you just saw the tap start to rotate I've been very careful here not to catch my hands on the lathe tool as I'm doing this oh. so I'll do exactly the same again now with the second tap and then finish it off with the plug tap so exactly the same procedure I'll bring you back when we're done so that's the darts tapped the next step is to remove eight millimeters off the end. It's going a bit slow. So I'll just bring the tool in and get myself a mark. There. Set a zero on my DRO. And I'm going to machine eight mil off the overall length. Should be round about the end of that red line, the next red line. 
a seven. I'll stop about seven point nine. And just face to eight mil. I'll just use my little counter sinker. Just break the edge of that thread in there. Okay. Now, as you saw on the other one, I've got that taper machine on there. And that taper will come to win within about a millimeter of the end of that diameter there. So I know when I get to there, the end of the dart will be the right diameter as well. So I've already got the compound set where I've done the other two. I'll just work my way back and four on here. That red line will disappear. I'm just shaking it gently, gently. You can see there's about three mil left there. That brings it to about two. More to come off yet. I've got my tool stuck out way too far here, but uh, that's so that you can see over the top of my tool post with a camera. I do tend to machine with a tool stuck out in the middle of the uh, no man's land as it were <laughs> and we'd have a lot less vibration if I did drop it right back it doesn't seem to bother it too much when I'm machining brass and aluminium but obviously with this tougher material just a slither more I just wound in 0 0.02 on my dial on the DTO and on the TRO <laughs> the DTO that's different like a cross between a DTI and a DRO. Uh, I think we'll call that a day. So I'll just break that back edge as I did with the uh, other set of darts with the uh, with a needle file and we're gonna give them a go. Well I've just blown out the holes in the back make sure they're all nice and clean. Shafts fit nicely in all of them. Um, I've only brought one down to the workshop with me but yeah that's the set done so uh, I suppose the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. So we're going to have to give them a whirl at some stage. So here we go. Aid special. Make it up as you go along. So my existing holders are nominal 60mm long. And I want the holder, it won't need to have a slot in it. It'll just need to have the dovetail and a, and a means of height adjustment. And I think if I have it stuck out the front there... I think 15 mil. Tell you what I'll do. I'll have it stuck out the front 20 mil. I can always reduce it and make it 80 mil overall. So my first job is cut a piece of steel from this bar, 80 mil long. Right, we'll get on with that. So we got our piece of steel, 80 mil. As you saw, I cut it off with a slitting disc. Probably the quickest, simplest way in my little shed without a bandsaw and what have you. I'm going to square this block up. Now, if you haven't seen it before, have a look back at my um, Quick Change Tool Post series. And it'll show in detail how I go about cutting the dovetails and what have you. Uh, what I'll do is show some small clips. I'm going to square it up first, but I'm going to use the four jaw chuck to do that. Um, I haven't got a milling machine. So, 16mm spanner on the jaw, and do the nuts on the back, just slacking them all off first. Now somebody has suggested to me, and I think it's a damn fine idea, um, at the moment I've got these nuts, which are the sort of, uh, the ones that came from the factory, and oh, these horrible little washers on here, which uh, were supplied by Warco, you can see that washer will come off, but the, uh, the nuts... They suggested I swap these for some flange nuts. Um, nuts with a flange built in. 
Um, not the serrated type on the underneath, but the, the smooth type. Well, I can always skim the serrations off anyway. But somebody suggested that I swap them for those. So, yeah, I'm going to keep my eye open. I haven't got any here, but uh, I know where I can get hold of some, no problem at all. And uh, I'll change them over on all of my uh, all of my chucks, I think, to do that. What's holding that on? See these washers, they get distorted on the inside. Come on, out you can. They get a bit distorted and shrink and they get a bit tight. So anyway, yeah, so I'm going to change the nuts to the, the Warco standard ones for a nut with a built-in flange. I think that'll be a far better job to uh, do that and you're not messing about with washers then. So we'll give all that a good clean down and get the four drawer up. See, with my age-old problem of rust in the uh, workshop here, I keep the... Uh, I keep my spare chuck that I'm not using in a plastic bag and it's got a bit of a general oil in it. So I'll just uh, I'll put that away. Just give that a bit of an oil up. I don't know when I'll be taking it out the bag again. Oop, drop the nut then. So if I do that and put it in a plastic bag. When I come to use it next time. It's not all covered in rust, so yeah, <laughs> what I've got to do in this, uh, in this climate in the UK, eh? So, yeah, that's alright. <laughs> I haven't uh, used the forge oil in quite some time, so, uh, yeah, it seems to work. You will notice, let me just show you this, and I put a rubber mat on me, um, if I had dropped the chuck or the chuck had fell out, at least I'm not going to, you know, damage my bedway in any way. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan there. So I'm going to give this chuck a blow down and fit the forge jaw. So it's all nice and clean. Just going to put a smear of oil on there because I don't know how long the chuck's going to be on there. And if any moisture gets behind it, the dreaded rust will come back to haunt me. <laughs> on... My spindle, there is stamped from Walco, they stamped on a letter zero or a number zero, what have you. The forge rod didn't have anything, so I tried it on in all three directions when I had it. And in one direction it ran true on the outside and the other two it didn't. So it seems to run best when I line up the little centre pot mark that I've put there. It seems to run better there than anywhere else. So I've just, oh, I may be forced to have it, I just always put that back on in the same orientation. I mean, being a forger, or it won't make much difference, but uh, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. I'll just get one of those nuts on there. It does fit on the register quite tightly, so uh, it doesn't fall off, but uh, it could, hence the rubber mat. It's a fiddly little job getting these in here. And there's another one. Put the third washer on. And retrieve the dropped nut. There it is. One of the advantages of keeping the floor clean or cleanish. Um, strangely enough, I think I could do with a bit of a sweep in here. I'm, uh, I do like to keep it fairly tidy, and I have to keep it in the workshop fairly tidy. Otherwise, you just you're tripping over stuff all the time. You know, you can't move in here if I don't have everything stored away after every use. But uh, I'm normally quite good at keeping the floor swept and I haven't done it lately. Not that I generate uh, huge amounts of swarf unless I'm uh, working on those aluminium rings that you've seen me work on in the past. Let's just make sure, I can't remember, did I do that one? Again, you'll see I use a spanner on the jaw. None of this holding the chuck with the chuck key. That's the one for the three jaw. Where's my four jaw one? None of this holding the chuck with the chuck key while you do it up. Hold it on the jaw with a spanner. These are for doing up and undoing the jaws, not for forcing against. Anyway, enough about that. Got the correct chuck. I think we could give this a, a blowout. Yeah. We'll give it all a blowout and I'm going to fit this up. Now you'll see on here I got a bit of bit of rust on my steel I think I'll scotch bright that over I don't want that rusty dust all over my lathe because huh, you know why I'm just setting up in the forge jaw not critical this I'm just eyeballing it both ways just getting this space in the center of this jaw 
and the other way loosen that one a bit not worried about clocking it up although you can clock up a, a rectangle a little bit more I think and I've sat it just away from the uh, from the face of the chuck oh <laughs> my knuckle just cracked and you can see that's running fairly true there so my first case is going to be to skim the end so it's just turning it's going to be an intermittent cut but I'm going to skim the end so that the end is square and now these jaws this chuck is fairly good and this side will be fairly square and obviously this one this one and this one will be 90 degrees to the axis of the lathe so when I face this end it's going to be pretty darn square but I will check it afterwards but uh, I know from experience with this chuck it comes out pretty good so I'll do this end and yeah I'll show you that right okay oh just unplug that angle grinder and plug the lathe back in that does help I did give it a, a quick oil everywhere earlier on I haven't cleaned it down yet but I did give it a quick oil and I've got these tips in there for uh, aluminium I know this one's on its way out so I'm not worried I would be, normally that would uh, this intermittent cut wouldn't do much good at all so let's see what we got I don't know I'm just going to tickle this. In fact, to find with this lathe, when you've got an intermittent cut, it uh, it will push the carriage back a bit. So, I tend to lock the carriage off. It's horrible, isn't it? And again, if I had a milling machine, I'd just be uh, hanging this out the side of my uh, Side of my vice and machine it across with a with a cutter. But you know, wouldn't be so much of an adventure, would it? <laughs> I'll put the cutter on with my compound. Save unlocking the carriage all the time. I know I've got the lay tool stuck out a long way. That's for your benefit so that you can see uh, the cut in action a bit better. If the lay tool was right in, you'd find that the, uh, the tool post would be in your way. Or in, the, in your field of vision, so to speak. So again then, I did leave a couple of mil on, mil on the, uh, well, probably about three mil on the overall length. Yeah, less of an intermittent cut in the middle there now, so I can uh, speed proceedings up a touch. A bit too slow. little bits when you've got an intermittent cut tend to jump all over the place. And if you've got an open collared shirt on, you can guarantee the, the little hot bits will jump straight down the front of your shirt. <laughs> Actually, a little subject I'll bring up, somebody picked me up on this the other week. Hold on. Yeah, I'm wearing a hoodie today and you've got these dangly things with a hoodie. And if I was leaning over the lathe, there'd be a possibility um, well, I, I don't have to get that close. I'm not leaning over it so much as it would be on a, a big lathe. But what I should be doing is just tucking those in for safety so that when I'm lean, leaning over the chuck, I'm not going to get my, uh, my laces caught in, in the workpiece and <laughs> dragging my head in. So, yeah, somebody picked me up on it the other week, tucked those uh, tails in on your hoodie. And, yeah, good observation. So I'd never really thought of it. But to all of you, tuck your laces in. We got it. Yeah, I'll just uh, clean that under that tool. So I'm going to just 
Run a file over the four corners or the four edges of that, flick it round 180 and machine the other end. So I squared up all the block and I need to machine the dovetail in here. Now if you watch me milling on my milling slide before, it's <laughs> you've got to be very gentle with it. Um, you know, I can't take massive cuts and to machine that out of there would take me quite some time. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to bore a blind hole in there. I've written it down. I know that that step is exactly 7mm. And I know to the to the flats on the top is 27 and a half. So I'm going to pick up the centre line in there. So I know that's 60. So I'll just... Uh, set my calipers to 30. Now these are... Let's call them workshop calipers. They're not, uh, you know, nothing fancy. I do have a set of mitre tiles, which I wouldn't do this with. Because <laughs> you're going to just generally take the points off and what have you. So, yeah, I'll pick up the centre of that now. So that is, uh, let's have a look, 39 and a half. That'll be 20, 19.75 near as damn it, is it? 19.78, that'll be good enough what I want. So I'll put a little centre pop on there, put this back up in the four jaw, clock the centre punch in, and I'll bore a hole in there, probably 27 diameter, probably six and a half deep, and that'll remove the majority of the material. I might even attack the four corners of the left with a with the angle grinder to take you know a bit of it out. So I think we're gonna call this episode homemade knurling tool for the mini lathe, perhaps. Sounds like a reasonable title, that's what it is. Um, and I'm going to carry on filming now. And what I film now will come out in the next episode shortly, because I already have the film in the can, as it were. OK, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And don't forget to have a look at those channels. That's Active Atom, Pedal Box, and good old Double Boost.